We want to keep talking about equality, but also the business of equality. And for that, we're going to invite into the stream Chilling Tong, president and CEO at the Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship. And we appreciate your being here. And I think, uh, you know, people of good character are always aghast when we see the stories of late when people who are of Asian descent have been attacked in different cities across the country. But then you've done a, your ACE has done a survey of Asian Pacific Islander um, businesses about how difficult it is for them to do business in this climate. Can you elaborate for us on what they're experiencing? Oh, yes, absolutely. Thank you very, very much for uh, asking uh, this question. You know, Asian, uh, Asian business community is America's fast growing ethnic group. Unfortunately, our business community is dealing with two illness, COVID and hate. We have a vaccine against COVID, but we don't have a vaccine against hate. So the impact of pandemic on AAPI business is extraordinary. Uh, by the, uh, the state of AAPI business in America is jeopardized. Like any other minority business community, our community has been disrupted by COVID-19, economic uncertainty, and racial injustice. We have the most difficult getting back to work after being laid off. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, almost half of AAPIs, I would say 46.6%, has experienced the greatest share of a long-term unemployed, about 26 weeks or longer. So we have conducted a national survey joined by the U.S. Black Chamber, U.S. Hispanic Chamber, and reimagine mainstream uh, how COVID affected their uh, minority-owned uh, small business. Among its key findings, more than 84% of AAPI business owners say COVID-19 has a negative impact on their business. And also, uh, you know, uh, uh, our national survey of, of business uh, last also indicate one in three female AAPI business owner have also experienced racial bias. And Julie, when we talk about various ways to address this or what needs to be done from a federal level, from the government level, what would you like to see enacted? What initiatives would you like to see follow through on that, that could really help address a lot of these concerns? Yeah, actually, you know, uh, I think the federal uh, government, I think they have done their best. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just had our Asian Heritage Month celebration, and we have a Secretary Thomas Romando and also SBA Administrator uh, Guzman to share with our AAPI business community the federal resources. I think this is a, uh, you know, very, very important for us. And also, we have to say we applaud President Biden's memorandum on combating racism and intolerance against AAPIs. But I think it is also very critical for local government to be consistent, uh, adopt this memorandum across the country for all minority groups that uh, have been discriminated against on a regular basis. You know, it's interesting when you some of the partnerships you formed, you look at the Hispanic community and that term Hispanic, it, it covers so many peoples from different parts of the world. And then when we say Asian, American, uh, Pacific Islander, that covers so many different people from different parts of the world. How do you get the different local governments that you're trying to work with to understand that and then to affect change that would protect all those people? Yeah, we constantly share with uh, elected official. We host our roundtable discussion with elected officials and also share with them about our problem. Our community are facing many, many challenges, access to capital, language barriers, techno uh, technology difficulties, and now safety issues. And there is an added stress for the hate, discrimination, and violence. And I think this is very important, you know, like we just had a webinar to work with the Department of Justice, uh, FBI, and also a U.S. Attorney's Office to share with our uh, audience and also business owner how they deal with the uh, hate, discrimination, and violence. There's about more than uh, probably uh, 3,800 uh, uh, violence incident. And the 40% also, almost 40% happen in the uh, work, uh, the place of business. So I think a lot of people, uh, they are not aware of that. But uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we have been working with leaders from the black and Hispanic communities 
to make sure all business and or people have access to the resources and capital they need to survive and thrive. And Jillian, focusing on the hate and discrimination aspect of this, do these business owners that you're talking to, the authorities that they have been in contact with or, or the authorities that they are reaching out to, are they in the position, do they feel like these authority figures, are they taking these threats against the businesses or against the business owners themselves seriously enough? Oh, yes. I, I think uh, uh, there is uh, some uh, cultural background in the Asian community. They are very afraid to communicate with law enforcement. And it's just like uh, our culture, we are very shy. You know, we don't want to make any trouble. We always, uh, you know, want to just make our work, you know, just very, very silent group. But I think right now uh, the community understand this is a time for them to make a voice. And they have been having engaged with other community to have some kind of neighborhood watch. And also they will be able to invite the law enforcement to participate in uh, all their events and webinars. So we are just very, very grateful. We're grateful you joined us today. Chilling Tong, President, CEO at the Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship.